Welcome everybody to our um, City Commission work session of June 20th. We'll call this meeting to order. Thank you all for being here today. If you will join me, uh, Jennifer Cowan will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so real quick, uh, for anybody that might be here for it, um, I think we went out on social media to let people know that we have to postpone our time capsule. We had a little malfunction. Um, but anyway, hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll be able to do it again and, and make a nice event out of it. So if you are here for that, we're not going to be doing it today. Um, but keep watching our social media and website and we'll We'll get that rescheduled as soon as we can. Um, next, Vinny, are you ready? Vinny, you ready? Okay. Um, we have the presentation of the History Maker Award by the Dunedin History Museum. So, Vinny Luisi, the director, please come forward. That better? There we go. I want to thank everybody for uh, working on the presentation that we had yesterday for Juneteenth and uh, well deserved and it worked out very well so I was very pleased with that and thank you all and the city for providing that for historic uh, purposes and for acknowledgement. Uh, but what I'm here for is a special an announcement. Uh, Pre-COVID, we used to have the history maker parties where we'd have it in the park, but COVID kind of put a damper on that. So we still have the meetings where we provide a committee together to get certain individuals from the year uh, that we feel are worthy of becoming history makers, which we've been doing for over 35 years. And I just want to read a letter that was sent to us which made our decision final on this year's committee uh, choice for History Maker of the Year. Uh, it, it has to do with Wendy Barmore. And uh, it goes on, when we lost Wendy, we lost a community warrior, a friend, a colleague, a musician, an all-around great individual. When Wendy sat on chairs, many of the boards on behalf and shared visions of our wonderful community with many of us walking lockstep with our own efforts. She has been involved in the Dunedin Chamber of Commerce as a board member, leadership Pinellas, past president of both downtown Dunedin Merchants and the Rotary. She had been a past chair of the City of Dunedin CRA Advisory Committee, a member of the Bay Area Concert and this area to entertaining us through her music. Wendy Balmore certainly deserves the history maker for wonderful Dunedin and her impact will live on in memory and spirit. The committee voted unanimously that this year the sole presentation would go to Wendy Barmore and we're proud to present it to Dave Barmore if he'll come up on that. I'll let Dave say a few words. Wendy, Wendy loved this town. It, it was her life. She just... Every day, it was always she wanted to do something more for this town. And I remember one time, a guy walked up and wanted to buy the house, and she says, I'm going to die here. And she, 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 she'll always live in our hearts. And, I'm, I'm, and uh, she loved all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anywhere. Listen. Yeah, get a picture, because I know we all have some stuff we want to say. All right. So turn around and come back up here. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> you can't get out of here that easily. I mean, we all have to say something. So um, I'll look to my colleagues first. Um, Vice Mayor. 
Well, Dave, it's good to see you up here. Um, I'm very you. proud of you standing the way you stand throughout all of this. That's just fantastic. I know you and I like to sneak off at some events and <laughs> have, a, have a little glass here and there, <laughs> and we talk about stuff. Yeah. Um, but now, now we've got Wendy, and I know. Uh, by the way, we have somebody standing. Oh, here. yeah. That's, look. <laughs> this, is, this is my son, Mac. I'm going to say that. <laughs> I think we all knew that. Just wanted to make sure we got that announcement <laughs> up here. Uh, Wendy was just fantastic for the community. I'm going to let everybody else kind of wax, wax eloquent on that. Uh, she was just fantastic. As you said, she was involved with anything and everything. And if you wanted to know anything about anything or how to get in touch with anybody <laughs> anywhere, she would, <laughs> she would do that. Yeah. And she might even provide a bus for you to get there. <laughs> so so she, was, she was truly, truly a character. Uh, will always be missed by all of us, and I appreciate your kind and short words, and I'll remain short as well. Dave, we'll look forward to seeing you walk into town, you and I. Peace. Thank you, Vice Mayor Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Dave, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, Vinny, thank you for the award to Wendy. I think Wendy kind of epitomizes and just puts such, such an image on who we are as a community. It's not just her passion for, for Dunedin, it was also her personality and, and, and drive. Just her love for the community was just in everything that she did. So uh, this certainly award is, is, is worthy of that recognition. So Dave, thank you for being here and we will see you around. Thank you. Commissioner. Holy smoke. That's a hard one because it's hard to lose Wendy. Um, but she is with us. And uh, I walked into the chamber yesterday who was volunteering the day, right? So you're, uh, Mike, you're uh, continuing to, I think, live in the way that you both always did live for the community. But, I mean, when I think about Wendy, of course, she had her album party at the Blur, and that was an mm -hmm. amazing moment that I'm glad she got yeah. to have. Um, the Toronto trip. I guess it was last year, and we have pictures of that. And, you know, she was always the one to crack you up, even at the comedy club. And, um, uh, and of course, the last thing, one of the last things she did before she, um, before she started to get sick was, of course, uh, donate her time to do Deborah Kynes' music at her party at the Art Center. Mm -hmm. So always giving to the community. And, uh, you know, she, um, you know, she was uh, somebody that explained kind of a heart and soul of Dunedin. And so it's hard to lose somebody like that, especially in their prime. Um, so, but I think this is a great way to honor her, and it's oh, yeah. very deserved. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioner? Wendy uh, truly did epitomize the spirit of this community, and uh, she set an example that, that all of us should follow in terms of the leadership and her, the civic pride in, that she instilled in the community. And, uh, I have to say, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know her real well, but I will say that what I, I feel like now, it's, I've come to know her a lot better because of the impact that she had on Dunedin. And I, uh, it's great to see you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got to think about this a little bit. I'd like to say one more thing. On July 8th, we have the Dunedin Orange Festival, and it's going to be in Pioneer Park. And part of the event is in the memory of Wendy, and there'll be banners and some of her music played while we're there. So I just wanted to let everybody know that her spirit lives on with all of our events. Thank you, Vinny. Um, you know, I, I have... Uh, known Wendy for a really long time um, and my first real encounter with her was um, with John Lewis coming forward back in those days when um, she had her kind of consulting firm um, and she was working with all of the concierges on uh, Clearwater Beach and it was hey how can we get the Jolly Trolley to come into downtown Dunedin um, and start that bowl ball rolling um, so she really was um, she and, and John and Lynn Wargo and, and uh, Greg Brady were big catalysts in pushing me to try to make that happen and then she ended up being on the board there you know um, because she loved it so much 
Um, and that's, that's kind of what I learned about Wendy. Whatever she was really interested in, um, she just didn't attend. She would jump into the leadership role in any of those groups. It could have been any number of things. Um, as you know, she was president of the Rotary, and she went to Rotary International, as you did, Dave. Mm -hmm. um, and she was a good person. For me, I, I just remember um, our girls' trips, <laughs> which were <laughs> very <laughs> un, unofficial <laughs> business. Um, You're not going to tell those stories? No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No, but I learned so much about her that I would have never known, you know, that she grew up next to the Sheen family oh, yeah. in California. I mean, who would have known, yeah. right? Yeah, and then yeah I, Martin Sheen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah and I, I heard those stories, which I will not repeat. Um, you know, she, she had an interesting life, and, um, but she was, even all of those things with the city, the most important two things she did was she was a mom and she was a wife. Um, and... She was a well-rounded person, but those are the things that, that you really care about, was her relationships with her family. And we appreciate all of your um, participation in our community and hope that you will still stay involved and, and be yourselves, but represent her, because she definitely leaves a great legacy for our community. Yeah, I have to. I keep hearing her telling me to do, do this. Pushing, pushing, <laughs> pushing, right? Go to this awesome, meeting. Awesome. <laughs> so everybody make sure they go to the Orange Festival. We'll all be there. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for letting us do the presentation here. Of course. Okay. Um, now it's time for citizen input. Anybody wishing to come forward and speak to any item that is not already on the agenda? Okay. Seeing or hearing none. Uh, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, we have the approval of the minutes of the May 16th work session, the May 18th regular meeting. We have board and committee appointments to the Board of Finance, the Causeway Coastal Waterways Committee, Library Advisory Committee, Marina Advisory Committee, and the Stormwater Advisory Committee. And we have the annual city sidewalk inspection and maintenance and repair contract. Um, are there any items to be pulled? I think the, I'd like the sidewalk one to be pulled. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Can I have a motion to approve all consent agenda items except for the sidewalk inspection program? So moved. Okay. Commissioner Rob Walker and second is Commissioner Franey. Um, is there any public input on any of these items? Seeing or hearing none. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, before I go to the sidewalk inspection program, I also just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that we, for our first work session, we have Catherine with us today. Yeah. So welcome. Sorry, I, I totally forgot to mention it earlier. Um, we know, I, I already told everybody we're not going to give you the hard time like we do Jorge. He's just pickable. Um, okay, so we'll go back to the sidewalk inspection and maintenance repairs. Did you want a presentation or, or did you have particular questions? I just would like staff to maybe just do a little bit of an overview of what for 75,000 we're doing and why it's important. Good morning. Good morning. Is this okay? Mm -hmm. Sue Bartlett, Public Works Director, and Mark Walters, Public Ser uh, Services <laughs> Supervisor, Superintendent. We thank you for the opportunity to talk about this program. Um, we feel that it's been a very successful program in saving our citizens' dollars and improving our sidewalk conditions. I'm going to let Mark talk a little bit about what's been done. And I also would like to refer to one of the attachments on the agenda, which is the last two years of work that's been accomplished by the contract for $50,000. And this will be our first year at $75,000. So we appreciate that increase so that we can get uh, more repairs done. Mark? Good morning. 
So in, in 2021, uh, we started this program and we had $50,000. We made 998 repairs and we started basically one block south of Main Street and we completed all the way up to Union, Milwaukee to Edgewater. So we got a big area done in, in, uh, for the $50,000. In 2022, we did 565 repairs and that way we went south of the stadium, Milwaukee, basically to Lyndhurst and to Union. So we did a, quite a bit in the south end of town. This year, I would like to move it up to the Amberley subdivision. We've been getting quite a few complaints in there. And I think we can, should be able to knock out the whole Amberley subdivision this year. <clears throat> Mark has more to share, but I just wanted to let you know that um, this program is more like shaving down the sidewalk versus replacement. And so you can shave um, you know, high areas and things that are out of ADA compliance, shave them down for a lot less dollars. So the program includes inspection and then identifying those spots and then going through and, uh, I did, you know, addressing each individual repair. Eventually, um, you have to replace some of that sidewalk, which is why we still have replacement work going on, which is much slower and much more costly. But that also goes on and also when the um, difference in um, the deviation is so great, then it can't be shaved down. And, you know, a tree pushes up a root too far, the sidewalk too far, a root pushes way too high. Then we'll have to go in and replace that. So that is still ongoing. Um, however, this it, it addresses immediate safety concerns as well as a very economical, quick repair. And with that, our concrete prices have went up this year 100%. So the county rebid and it's went up 100 percent of buying the concrete so this is a, another cost saving measure to us um, we we feel we've saved about 166 thousand dollars over the last two years in repairs of shaving this will buy us time it's not going to be the fix forever but it'll buy us time and make the sidewalk safer for the community one more additional item is this year we're going to reevaluate the total inventory and uh, so that we can uh, based on the repairs that we've done, uh, we would only have about a third of the inventory left to do, but um, that two thirds of the inventory left to do, but we're gonna reevaluate the total inventory to make sure that we're restating that correctly. Any questions or? No, I just would add that, you know, a few years back, I was risk manager for Dunedin when I was a staffer. A few years? A few years. <laughs> and uh, my very first uh, claim payout for $75,000 was a sidewalk fall. It was a very elderly person and, uh, and just it was not an obvious, you know, difference, which is usually the case. And, and uh, I can still remember the attorney's name. But anyway, it was just, uh, this is something important to do. I mean, it's real when people fall. You know, there are very legitimate cases that happen. And, uh, and we do have... Uh, quite a bit of elderly individuals in our community, especially that makes it even more important. So, so I was just uh, the the figure came back to mind. And it was quite a few years ago. So seventy five thousand <laughs> today. Uh, anyway, so it's it's a, it's good money, I, and I appreciate the work that's being done. Thanks, Mark, for your detailed description too. Thank you. Any questions, Commissioner Walker? No. Vice Mayor. Any questions? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to. Uh, I really thank all the staff for this. This is really important. It's always been important to me, and the move up um, to the, to the 75,000 is just fantastic. Um, I would be supportive of more than that, as you know. So for all the staff, but specifically for Mark and the presentation that you provided on the attachment, just really detailed and really fantastic. And I would hope that we would even, even go higher than this the next time, because safety and security, as pointed out, is very, very important and we do have people that use those sidewalks. And it's actually embarrassing when we have a sidewalk that, that is, and I've seen them, I've seen too many of them. Um, but, but fantastic job, thank you, Mark, for, thank you. for following this up, thank you. Commissioner? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you, you know, I think this falls in line with our solid waste, our, our wastewater, and just the services within the city that is just what we do. And, and maintaining our sidewalks certainly falls into that same category. And anything that we can do to provide um, a safe place of transportation 
uh, the better it is, and walking is transportation. Thank you. Way to go, Jeff, yeah. and get that in there. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I did have a quick question. Did I hear you say Amberley, too, on top of what we're doing? We're, we're going to be in the Amberley subdivision. That's our where we're concentrating on this year to go. Okay, because, oh, I see. We, what you gave us locations. is what we did last year. Yes. Oh. Got totally confused by that. So, we're, so it's we're, Amberley that we're doing this year. We were going to do the southwest quarter uh -huh. uh, of the city, but means all the complaints are coming in. I think Commissioner Gow's got a couple. Um, we're going to move our shift our operations over there and try to knock out that whole subdivision. Yeah. Well, and it's, I mean, well, Amberley was built in the 70s, mm -hmm. middle 70s. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, I know Overcast <coughs> was built like 72, Ranchwood. So Amberley came right And I've got you. my staff in, in the Ranchwood subdivision trying to knock out yeah, that Yeah, because that's another area. It's And, you know, a lot of it is because we are a tree city USA and we have trees and they grow. Um, so it's, you know, kind of a necessary evil thing. <laughs> you just, you, you're not going to get rid of the trees. They so have to deal with sidewalks. I, I think I would be interested in, you know, I don't need to know that now, but I would, I would definitely be interested based on what you did last year and what you're going to do this year to maybe get some kind of projection report that shows kind of how long you feel at a certain amount of money, like the 75, how long is it going to take us to get around the city? You know what I'm saying? You know, what we can achieve with that. Because let's say you say it's 10 years. Well, I think in budgeting, maybe not for this year because we already have a plan, but for next year, it would be important to understand, okay, if you make it 150, we can shave off three years or kind of, you know, what Vice Mayor was talking about. I think that would be important to understand. And that's kind of how we know about our roads with that software. I know it's not a perfect measure, but I, I think it, it would be good to understand that um, going forward. Um, okay, uh, any public comment? All right, can I? No, yeah, I, I did. I didn't forget him. Um, my partner over here. I yeah, I know. Just in case. Uh, okay. Uh, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. I'll go with Vice Mayor and Commissioner Gao. All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, I'm, I'm going to veer off of our agenda because um, we have one more presentation. So Jennifer Bramley, would you go to the podium, please? <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not going to. That wasn't brief on this. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> on purpose, baby. <laughs> Since, since we can't harass Catherine. Yeah. yeah we, can harass. we have to harass somebody. <laughs> and I'm who glad, better than I'm Jennifer? Glad I dressed up today. Yeah, no, I promise. Not, nothing bad. Do you know about this? So, so Jennifer um, is celebrating an anniversary that she probably doesn't even um, realize that we know about. And that is her five year service to the Florida FCCMA. Yes. Yes. I am. You are. <laughs> and for anybody that doesn't know, the FCCMA is a member-driven association where their members plan their webinars, events, and on-site trainings, as well as provide content included in their newsletters and podcasts. Um, and, you know, because the association would not be successful without the support and contributions of their members, these years of service award is to recognize and honor those members for their dedication, loyalty, and commitment to the association, um, and acknowledge them for their long-term contributions. So um, on behalf of the Florida City and County Management Association, Jennifer's service is recognized, and it was recognized in the slideshow during their awards program at the annual conference in June earlier this month. And so, um, and if you don't know, um, 
Jennifer is a cert certified um, city manager and, and has to go through extended training every year to keep that um, designation. So on behalf of the FCCMA, I'd like to present you with your five-year pin. Well, thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Come on. Tell us a little bit about, FCC about the organization and, and you know what you've done. So actually, FCCMA, and this is the Florida chapter, obviously, and the national is the ICMA. Um, and uh, they're very active. We're in District 7, and Matt Spoor, who is the city manager of uh, Safety Harbor, is our district director. He's doing a fantastic job uh, with District 7. We're really very active uh, in, in the state, uh, the district is. And actually, uh, Jorge is a member of FCCMA. Nicole Delfino in our office is a, is a student member of, a, of, of FCCMA. She just finished her master's degree. So uh, I'm proud to represent the city. I was on the membership committee and the professional development committee as well. But things got a little bit busy here, so I didn't renew my membership in those committees. And I want to actually now things have calmed down a little bit. I want to get back on those. So I, I very much appreciate the time that the city commission allots to me to participate in that professional development. It's really, really important to the city, I feel, that we are out there in the state uh, and that we are interacting with other city managers. We talk about best practices. We talk about recruitment, we talk about all sorts of different things. And so I'm very grateful for that time and I'm grateful to staff for all the support well, as, we, uh, as we participate in FCCMA. So thank you very much, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners for this nice surprise. Well, come forward so that um, Sue can get a picture of, if everybody would just stand up and you can come stand in front of us. Could I, could I have Jorge come up because he's all Just. Stand right there and we'll. Okay. Here we go. Right. Okay, there it is. One, two, one more. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We are very proud of the effort that you take to make sure you're educated um, on the latest and greatest um, programs and services that cities offer and getting those new ideas because, you know, Dunedin likes to be the city of firsts um, in just about anything, and you help us stay on that track. So congratulations, Jennifer, and thanks for your service to the community. Thank you so much, Mayor. That was very kind of you. Thank you. You are more than welcome to talk, Mo. No, I was just going to say, I thought you were going to congratulate her for spending the weekend with Mickey Mouse <laughs> and, and her grandchildren. No. <laughs> that was fun, too. <laughs> no, I will say that I also know, um, you know, uh, since I know quite a few people in the city manager realm that, you know, how much she's respected by her colleagues around the county. Um, you know, they have their city manager consortium and, and I, I'm sure you guys talk even to other commissioners, but even within their ranks. Jen Jennifer's, she's, she's really high, highly respected and I would suggest that some people are jealous that we have her in Dunedin and mm -hmm. I appreciate her a lot because you know, you, I'm sure you guys have the same thing when you go in there for your meetings behind the scenes and you can just debate very heatedly, but it's always not personal and you're just trying to do the best thing for the citizens and, you know, it's, uh, I appreciate everything you do. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, we'll move on to action items, which is resolution 23 dash um, 15, uh, equipment master leasing services for sol four solid waste vehicles at a total cost of $1,300,000 mil one and change. I will look to Jennifer Cowan to read the, uh, the resolution by title only. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution number 23-15, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Dunedin, Florida, authorizing the lease purchase financing of the acquisition of a new way Cobra 20 CY rear loader crane carrier LNT2-30 chassis with a Peterson TR3 route assistant, New Way Mammoth 40 CY front loader, and an auto car ACX-64 chassis side loader, approving the form of and the authorization and authorizing the execution and delivery of Schedule of Property Number 2 with Bank of America National Association, approving the form of and authorizing the execution and delivery of an ex 
escrow agreement in connection therewith with Bank of America National As Association authorizing the execution and delivery of other documents required in connection therewith, making certain covenants and agreements in connection therewith, and providing an effective date. Yeah. <laughs> okay, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Commissioner Franey and Vice Mayor John Twanga, thank you. Um, I just have to say, I, and I know Mo will remember this, I, back in the days when John Hubbard used to read the title of a resolution, he would read it so fast and so accurately, you literally didn't hear it. I mean, you had to really like have read it yourself. It speed, yeah. I mean, it was he was like a speed demon. Right. So anybody watching would be like, "What?" <laughs> so at least, I mean, at least you do speak slow so that we can follow you. But it was just such a polar difference between you and John when he used to do it. Um, anyway, okay. So uh, this is about the finance piece of it. It's not about. The That's type correct. of vehicles and all of that, it's about the finance piece. So, Les, okay, you're great. on. Good morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, Les Tyler, the Finance Director. Uh, this item is Resolution 2315, as just uh, described, for Equipment Master Lease Services with Bank of America for the purchase of four solid waste vehicles. Some brief background on this item. The City Commission awarded the contract to Bank of America in January of 2022 as a result of RFP 22-1195. The city, after that, entered into a contract with B of A on January 21st, 2022. Uh, and the reason for that was we, we set up a master lease agreement that would be for a five-year term that expires uh, January 2027. The purpose of uh, the award of that contract was to uh, identify a financial institution, and we chose B of A that the city could contract with to finance future purchases of various vehicles, and the purchases of which uh, the city commission has already approved. The lease payments are made in arrears on an annual basis. The City Commission approved the purchase of four solid waste vehicles, and the three of them were part of the fiscal year 23 fleet replacement, replacement package presented to the Commission on February 21st, 2023, and the fourth one was presented to the Commission in, in fiscal year 22 fleet replacement package presented to the Commission on January 18th, 2022. The City Commission was informed in both of those fleet replacement packages that city staff plan to finance the purchase of those solid waste vehicles. Uh, the four solid waste vehicles uh, are listed in the staffing background, and I'll briefly mention them. The first is a 2023 Crane Carrier New Way Cobra rear loader, cost of $275,518. The second is a 2023 Crane Carrier Peterson TR3 Claw. That's th the price is $305,459. The third is the 2023 Crane Carrier New Mammoth Front Loader, cost of $353,997. And the fourth is the 2022 Auto Car uh, Wayside Loader at a cost of $382,772. Uh, one of these vehicles will be delivered in July 2023, uh, just next month, and the other three are expected to be delivered in October of this year. Uh, the total cost and borrowed amount will be $1,317,746. Uh, Bank of America has <coughs> proposed an interest rate, a, a tax exempt interest rate of 3.81% over a five year period. The annual payments uh, will be $294,423.53. The five year total paid will be uh, $1,472,117. Uh, and the cost of funds or, or the interest paid over that five-year period will be $154,370.82. Uh, the city will, is required to enter into a master lease agreement with Bank of America uh, for the purchase of these vehicles. Uh, this, these documents and the resolution have been reviewed by our, our city attorney and also uh, by our bond council and disclosure council, uh, BMO Dwayne Draper, and they've, uh, they've found all the terms and conditions of the lease agreements to be acceptable. And the acceptance of Schedule 2, uh, which, is, which is inside of the uh, resolution, uh, is required to be approved in Resolution 23-15. Staff requesting the City Commission approve Resolution 23-15 and authorize staff to enter, enter, enter into this master lease agreement to borrow $1,317,746.83 to finance the four vehicles. And that concludes our comments and any questions, happy to answer. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Any questions, Commissioner Franey? 
No, I don't have any. Any questions, Ralph? Uh, yeah. Um, so I, I think um, you take a look at the, uh, the what we are approving here, $1.3 million, and that, that's a big number. But as your, I, your, I'm sorry, your microphone? So as I understand it, uh, there's a significant advantage to doing this way um, for purposes of really kind of uh, level setting the, the budget in the out years. Just uh, for the benefit of the public, would you just provide that advantage because I think that's an important distinction of what we're, what we're talking about right now. Yeah, yeah, there is an advantage to, to uh, leasing vehicles. We, we've been leasing vehicles for the solid waste department for a number of years now, uh, and it, it, it does smooth out the payments, as you just mentioned. You, uh, you're, you're, not, you're, you're not having to have uh, huge cash flow outages uh, in certain years, so yeah, it, it, it does smooth out payments and does work well. Uh, I want to mention also this rate we feel is reasonable. Uh, we, we, we compare this to other banks. I also, uh, we discussed this with our financial advisor, uh, Hilltop Securities, and, and that 3.81 or 8.2 is a, is, a, is a good rate for in, in today's market, a fair rate. But yeah, there's, there's definitely advantages in smoothing out the payments, for sure. Yeah, and I, you know, uh, obviously the, the capital assets here are extremely important to the community, and uh, I, uh, I, I think the way that this has been structured is, is really um, somewhat uh, very, very it's brilliant. I, I think it, it's a really good way to do this. So I just want to pass that on. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner. Thank you. Vice Mayor, anything? I'll just make a quick comment. Excellent presentation and great job. And this is a, this is a way to do this. And this, we, this is what we all really wanted to have happen on the capital side. So. Uh, this is a, an advantage and a, and a good and, and a good rate. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Any questions, Commissioner Gal? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, j just because of the d the dollar amount, is there any way that for for the public, we can get a really brief understanding of what each one of those trucks does? Because the the public sees them every day, and I don't know that they know that they see them every day. And so, just real quickly what a side loader is, what a claw truck is, et cetera, et cetera. So the public is aware of that. Good morning, Bill Pickram, Solid Waste and Recycling Division. Absolutely, we, uh, and I'll be brief on this, is that out of the four <laughs> trucks, uh, we have, they're kind of a mixture of all. We have uh, the, the truck that was approved in 2022 is a side loader truck that's picking up your rolling trash carts, so it's on the residential side. The three trucks approved this year, we have one backpacker that's picking up our yard waste in bulk manually. We have a claw truck, which is a utility truck, which gives us a lot of uh, coverage on the yard waste and bulky side, but also it's that truck that we use when after a storm, the claw trucks are pretty vital. That's on the residential side. And then that third truck is the front loader on the commercial side, collecting our, our restaurants, bars, commercial entities, as well as those multifamily complexes that have dumpsters. Thank you. Thank you. Just wanted the public, thank you, Bill. Wanted the public to hear that. So thank you. Uh, and I guess my last question is because is I agree this is a, a, it's a wonderful deal. I, I, I certainly agree with uh, Commissioner Walker and his comments, but we're paying an interest of $154,000, and and I get why this is an expensive deal. Is there is there any way we could get to paying cash for these, or is it just the the price tag? I know what it would take to get there, but is that ever a possibility? I, you know, in the next rate study, I, I talked to Jorge about this a little bit. I think. Uh, I think we could, we looked at this at, at the last rate study, we looked at, you know, what it would cost to uh, bring, them, bring them into paying cash and not financing, but, uh, and, and it, was, it was not feasible, but I do think we might be able to look into possibly uh, doing every other one. In other words, uh, I think we could look at smoothing into it and saying that, uh, it, you know, every other purchase we may try to pay for cash and then finance every other vehicle or something like that. And I think we'll have to do it in gradual steps. But uh, I, I, think, uh, I think we'll work in the next rate study, we'll work through, you know, what might work. Uh, uh, but but I, I think going to full cash is very difficult, but I do think we might be able to ease into it maybe over a couple of, 
a couple of uh, five-year periods, we could get to paying uh, the full cash up front if, if we wanted to. Yes, Commissioner, if I could just elaborate and kind of piggybacking on Commissioner Walker's comments. Uh, we did look at that in the past, and um, what it does is, as Les explained, it, it creates spikes in the rate. So we obviously want to try to smooth that out so that our rate payers aren't seeing a huge increase one year and then a drop in the, in the next. And, and so we're trying to spread that out evenly. We can look at alternating the purchase of the vehicles, um, as you saw, there's disparity in the cost of those depending on when they need to get replaced. And, you know, we've looked at other options in the past where we just kept the chassis and, and removed the box and tried to get additional life out of a, a re, um, refurbished unit. But um, those are all things that we have to bake into the rate study and the analysis and see what makes uh, sense as far as uh, a rate that we can charge our customers that's comparable to, that we can benchmark against other municipalities in the area. We don't want to be on the high end. So we, it's all a balancing act. Yep. Just to, because it used to be full cash. Used to be full cash. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have the rate spikes because of course you'd be working towards a replacement value as you led up to having the full replacement. So you, you did smooth it out. Um, so I mean, possible to go back there without having some of the downsides that you said, but it is hard to go back. Yeah, the, the difficulty we're, we're, we're seeing now is um, the increase in the vehicles and, and the, the, uh, the delivery time, the fabrication time associated with them. Um, it's taking a far lot longer time to actually order them to, to when they're delivered and, and when they can, can be placed in the service. <laughs> so we need to factor that in and maybe on a six or a seven year replacement cycle, but we have to have that money ready at year five because that's when we have to order the, the unit, issue the purchase order. So that's all the stuff that needs to go into the consideration on the rates. Well, if I can add to that too, Commissioner Gow, I think part of the problem happened, just some history, and I may not have every fact correct, but the general idea is, you know, when we transitioned to the 111 program and included recycling, we definitely wanted to hold off on rate increases for a while um, because it was just a change um, on how we operated. And after that, the recyclables market fell. And so it was costing us so much more to do things that again, we didn't want to have to raise rates to cover g going back to cash. We didn't do cash for a while also because of the recession. So it was kind of like this perfect storm of things happening that we got to this place, and not that we're in a bad place, we're not. But I mean, we're not, we don't have that where we've been paying. Um, because, we've, because we've tried to keep that cost away from our rate payers. Also, if I may, Mayor, I'd be remiss, and in, in, um, if you recall during the budget, the first budget work session, Sue and Bill had uh, allocated some funding in 24 to do an efficiency study to look at optimizing our routes how we perform the service that we do, how we can um, be much more efficient in the way we, we run those routes and to see if there's any efficiencies that are gained there that can extrapolate to the equipment that we use and how often it needs to be replaced. Sure. Uh, th thank you. Uh, and I, this is the conversation I think needs to take place, even if we can't do it. And again, I, I think the deal is, is good. So I'm, I'm not being critical. Uh, it's just a matter of if we can save 154000 that's great. If we can't, we can't. But I think it's at least worthy of the conversation. So thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, with that efficiency study, are we going to be um, also doing a rate study, or is it after that? We have the rate study um, planned for this year and the efficiency study in next year's budget should it be approved. Okay. Shouldn't that be reversed? <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, it seems like it might. I'm trying not to get into your operational business, but it just seems like it should be the other way around. Yeah, have a good point. We can look at that to see if we hey, can have you got, the money. Hey, look, I'm not shoot, telling you what to do. That's up to Jorge Jen. and Jennifer, well, but I'm just saying, as soon as you said that, I was like, 
<laughs> Shouldn't we do the efficiency first before the rate study? I think actually what we need to do is when we scope out the rate study is make sure that it would consider the efficiency study. Yeah. We can, we can certainly do that. Yeah. Again, I'm not mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. yeah. trying to stay in my own lane here. Um, okay. It's a good lane, but it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Um, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to come forward and speak to this item, please feel free to do so. Seeing or hearing none. Um, any final comments from ever anyone? I think everybody sort of said them. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Walker. Aye. Commissioner Gao. Aye. Vice Mayor Toronga. Aye. Commissioner Franey. And Mayor Bajowski. Aye, that motion passes unanimously. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Les. Um, all right, and then we have the proposed agenda for. Mayor, Mayor I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I, I, I missed the motion and the second on that last. It one. was uh, Commissioner Franey and Com Vice Mayor Twenga. Okay, thank you. Right at the beginning. All right, uh, the proposed agenda for July 11th. A lot of good things on there. Um, everybody okay with all of that? We've got, um, yeah, um, electronic bill payment services, data recovery backup, storm rotor rate study um, to award the contract for that, not to actually get the results of it. Um, the campaign, the electronic campaign filing reports um, voting delegate for Florida League of Cities, if anybody's going to be going in August, um, we have to appoint that person. I will not be attending that because I have a family wedding. So I'm not. Okay. And then what, I think we need to pick our committees too, although we have not gotten anything about the committees. So, um, Catherine, if you will. Uh, when Rebecca comes back, just make sure that we, I haven't seen anything about, they're asking about the voting delegate, which is one person in, in one situation, but then there's always committee appointments that I know these guys always want to be a part of, so we need a list of those committees and have the ability, it would be great if we could have it at the same time, so it's all done. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what all the, I don't know if they've changed their committees or not, so. Sure, I'll be happy to check with Rebecca when she comes back on Thursday, and I'll be okay. happy to discuss that with her. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, we'll have a, we'll have the scope for the master plan for the marina and the CEQ letter. The CEQ, you guys are going to have a, some kind of a presentation that tells us what, what you're recommending or what we're already doing, right? We will, yes. Okay. Okay, anything else from the commission? All right. Um, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Commissioner Gao and Commissioner Walker, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, we're getting ready to go into our budget discussion. I mean, I know it's kind of early, but do we want to take a little coffee break and come back? Because that, that, I don't know, that conversation might go for a while, but just gives us a... Okay, so we'll take a five-minute break.
which is our 2024 City Commission line item budget discussion. Um, one of the things I just wanted to say leading into this, um, and the Deputy City Manager and myself had this conversation, I'm sure he's talked to you about it. Um, I think what would be helpful when we do this um, every year, and I always kind of forget to say something, is if we had a narrative on the line items that are changing significantly from one year to another. Um, because we're all going to ask the same question, we're all going to want to know, and it would be so much more helpful to, just, to, to have read that before we get here versus trying to react to it on the dais. Sure. So for whatever budget meeting coming up, I think it would be helpful. We're not approving this today, we're just giving some consensus direction. But I think in the future, always having that narrative would be helpful. And then I also think we should get that narrative for whatever next budget meeting is, whatever it's July or August. I don't think it matters. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, because there was some considerable number of increases that we don't always experience because we're in a new building. And um, just having some of that narrative would have helped with a little bit of the sticker shock. So, sure. Okay. Definitely. All right. Uh, Les? Okay, great. Thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, Les Tyler, the Finance Director, and I'm here with Ashley Kimpton, our Budget Manager. Uh, this item is the 24 Commission Draft Budget Review. Uh, I just want to mention that there's a, in the staffing report, Exhibit A in the staffing includes a summary of the fiscal year 24 Commission Budget, and it shows actual costs for 22, actual costs for fiscal year 23 from October through May of 23, uh, seven months the original budget for 23 and the proposed current proposed budget for 24. Uh, exhibit B in the staffing includes a little more detailed line item budget for fiscal year 23 and also a fiscal year 24 uh, draft budget. I'd like to go over some of the uh, f uh, key changes uh, in some of the line items and looking at exhibit A, uh, the, which is the summary budget item in the packet. Uh, first one is salary and benefits. Uh, uh, had a, not a large increase, but we had a $2,800 increase in salary and benefits uh, from uh, 20, 24 to 23, and that was just that was due to the waiving of health benefits for one commissioner that increased that slightly. Uh, and under the operating cost section, uh, the majority of the of the the key changes I'll I'll briefly go over, and hopefully it's the ones that you've noticed and not other ones. Um, first is the IT internal service fund cost. Uh, they've, they've increased uh, from 20, in 24 compared to 23 by 11,800 uh, year over year. A couple reasons for that increase are uh, the allocation for that is done uh, by number of devices, meaning laptops and uh, iPads, things like that. The devices have increased in 24 <coughs> compared to 23 from 14 devices. It was 12 devices, so there's two more in 24. And also, uh, the uh, the department has. I'll, I'll just mention a few a few projects that are are new that are have increases in 24 for 23. Um, the the larger dollar items. First, we have a subscription with MS MS Office 365. That's a $38,000 increase in 24 for 23. We have citywide security cameras contract. That's $25,000. Uh, that was zero in 23. $25,000 increase. We have uh, the IT license and software for our Tyler Cloud ERP systems. Uh, this is for licensing uh, manage, and ma maintaining support for our ERP for all, all the different uh, uh, modules and disaster recovery. That increased $118,000 year over year. Uh, Sentinel One is a new antivirus software that we have, and that is uh, an increase of 37,000 in, in 24 compared to 23. And another one is uh, for cybersecurity initiatives, uh, and this is just uh, software protection, uh, sort of a placeholder of $56,000 more in 24 than 23. And so those are sort of the, the key increase in projects uh, that, we, that we've had in 24 currently compared to 23. And the other increase, uh, excuse me, I think what we'll do is, as you're telling us about the increases in that particular line item, we'll just stop and see if there's any questions about them. Okay. Sounds Are you done with that one line I'm, item? I'm done with that one. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Any questions on the information technology? 
Okay, and and we know we've had a lot of stuff. And yeah. the other thing I think we all understand is um, we're just a percentage. So what we see reflected here is going to be reflected in all the departments that are in this building. That's correct. So you know we have a bigger building. Mm -hmm. We have two more offices than we had in the other building. Mm -hmm. So we're taking up more square footage, et cetera, et cetera. But okay, yeah. go ahead. That, that's correct. Mayor, Thank you. may I, if sure. I may then. Um, so we're looking at number of devices, then we're looking at uh, whatever significant thing has been added mm -hmm. and whether that, how that's allocated, I'm not sure. And then the rest of it is done by, generally by square foot, correct? Yeah, for, for IT services uh, allocation, it's, it's uh, by devices. It's mainly by devices. The square footage comes more into play on the facilities. At, uh, yeah, the next line I do. Right, yeah, so for IT, it's, it's mainly number of devices. Yeah. So anything that you're talking about about facility is done, is, is done by? Square footage. square footage. That's right, yeah. But with the IT stuff, we have um, all of the new programs, um, the new software, hardware, all of that stuff. So it's not just the number of devices, it's all those other things that go, that get the cloud. That, that's right, we went, that's a good point. We went to the cloud on, uh, we're, we're working on going to the cloud with Tyler right now, about to roll that out. And we're also going to the cloud on a couple other versions. And the cloud's a little more expensive because they're maintaining servers, but you know, it's, it saves us time, but it is a little more expensive uh, to get yeah. more on the cloud. So just for clarification, it is, IT is not just done by device then? No. Michael, you want to, I, I just, I want to make sure I speak out of turn. Just want to make sure. Good morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, Michael Lee, Director of IT Services. So for FY24, we have 12 new initiatives, which total about just under $400,000. Some of them are a one-time purchase. Some of them will be ongoing. For example, the Tyler Support Services, the ClearGov for the budget program, NeoGov for HR. All those, those things were budgeted last year. They weren't part of the IT. Um, uh, they were added to IT. So we're taking on that role moving forward. So, and then we've got 18 existing items that are increasing pricing by $285,000. So when we add up all the operational cost, um, actually there's a formula they use to divide by the number of devices you have and that's your share of the cost. So a lot of these one-time new purchases and price increases affect this $11,800 increase in your budget. And Michael, the, the, all the allocations in your ISF are based on device, correct? Correct. Okay. So it is all by device? It, it is all by device, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thanks. But it's all good stuff. Yeah. And everybody's getting these increases, not just that this is not just a commission, it's just yeah. really a lot of what we see, most of what we see, except maybe one or two line items are a result of, can be related to the entire organization, their increases as well, exactly. most of them anyway. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay, so then building maintenance? Yeah, for building maintenance, uh, the, there's an increase in, in 24 over 23 of $4,600 uh, in the commission's draft budget. And that's due to overall facility fund cost increases. And uh, one of the reasons for the increase is in 23, we were able to use about $350,000 of reserves a year ago uh, in that fund that reduced the allocation to departments. This year, we're only able to use 100,000, so we've got about 250,000 more in cost in 24 that we're allocating, so that's, that's part of the increase. And the other, the other increase is uh, the actual cost per square footage, and, and, and this is uh, square footage, uh, commissioners asked that question. Uh, the rate has increased from th th uh, 3.55 3 in current year to 3.88 in 24, so that's about a 9% increase. And that, and, the, and that also citywide, that's not just the commission's budget, that's citywide. So, uh, so both those things are, are increasing the allocation to departments. Uh, the, 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 we have much less reserves to be able to re reduce the allocation and the increase in the rate of about 9%. Okay, and I'm, I'm sure there will be questions here. Um, questions? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I get the increase, plus I get 
We get the increase, and um, we have more square footage, too, as far as the commission goes. Bigger chamber, mm -hmm. we have offices. Um, so I get that piece, too. My bigger thing here is, and not something I expect you to answer today, um, but my bigger concern, and Sue, this is probably more for you, is just our, our how we're planning this, like what the full budget of, of not just building maintenance, but our custodial is. How we're, we, you know, we have this great, fantastic new building. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to cost less. We had crappy buildings. We probably, you know, sometimes you have a crappy building, you put less maintenance in it because it's crap. And now we have beautiful buildings, and it's easy to take that for granted, but you need to, you know, put that effort in the, the front end uh, so they, 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 you know, really live out their life. So I guess it's really that big picture view at some point that I'd like to see. I don't know if that's a work session or whatever where, you know, the whole fund is and how we're looking at how our philosophy is now with some of these new facilities and that we're really making sure we're putting that kind of um, upfront time in the things we should. That, that's my bigger issue. So. And that'll, that'll be under the custodial services lower down? Uh, well, actually, it's both. You have building maintenance and you have custodial. Right. They, they both are about taking care, you know. Right. And uh, so, yeah. And, and one of the things I did talk to Jorge about yesterday, and I'm, I'll just say it now since you brought that up, is, sure. is um, I think it's important for us to see what goes into that square footage formula and just understanding that. Um, again, we don't look at line item budgets anymore like we used to back in the day. Um, and there's a reason for that, because we're policymakers, we're looking at the big picture. But of course, you, you're going to hand us our own budget, so we have to ask those kinds of questions. And, and it's not that we don't trust what the formula is, but we, you know, there's also some loss in translation, if you will, because we're low on employees in that department. So understanding what that square footage includes and, and you know, I'd like to know, is it just because the increase of square footage that we have here in this building? Or are there other factors built in? And so, again, I think when you come back with our narrative, maybe a little bit of an explanation on that would be helpful. Yeah, and I, so I, I guess I say more to Sue, you know. For me, it's that whole theory of, you know, you have, you have a year. And in a year, you have periodic things you need to do to keep up a, a new building, just like you do your house. And, uh, and you know, how have we built that? And how do we have the staff for that? And what's our philosophy for that? And to make sure we're all on the same page. So, because it's important. And I know you guys share that with staff. So yeah. I just want to make sure we're all kind of talking through the big picture of it. Well, and part of the reason I, I even jumped into this is, and again, I said to Jorge yesterday, you know, you've got a brand new building, and while I know it's bigger, it's brand new. How much maintenance is it going to need? Mm -hmm. It kind of brings yourself to ask that question. Mm -hmm. Even though I know that there's a lot of things we're working through in the first year of a building, there are things that have to be adjusted and done because it's a brand new building, and, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes things have to change or be tweaked, and so that's maintenance, mm -hmm. and that has to get built in. But I, I think that's a question I think I would get from anybody on the street, how much maintenance are you going to get with a brand new building? Mm -hmm. So I just have to say there's, there's a house where I will not say where it is, a long alternate, alternate 19 that when it was built, it was incredibly beautiful. It's a mansion, right? Go buy it now. It's not. It's not. Oh, I know exactly the house I you're talking about. You're talking about. Yep. It's like, wow, Edge of your neighborhood, baby. It's, it's all about, you know, it's all about maintenance in the end. A brand new building can go to heck real quick if it's not for. So. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? Okay. Alrighty. Um, what's the next big one with significant change? I guess it would be utilities. Yeah. The next one I have was uh, utilities, electric mm -hmm. cost. Yeah. Uh, and that's got a large increase. Uh, and there's a few things going on with this one. Uh, first off, uh, our budget for 23 was based on the the estimates we got back from Duke a year ago, uh, or more than a year ago, and they estimated about a five or six percent increase, and and we set our 23 budget with that. Well, Duke's, Duke's rate increases this year have been you know quite a bit more than that. They had a 12 percent in January, and then another two and a half percent in April. So, so our our, our 23 budget is uh, we're under budget, and, and we're gonna we'll be at some point bringing forward a BA 
to shore that up for 23. A budget uh, adjustment? Budget adjustment, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, and as an example, you know, I was looking yesterday at, uh, it shows there what the actuals are on the, on the second column from the left. It shows the actuals for the current year through, through May, which are $5,010. And we've got, uh, we have two bills on this facility so far, two on the new city hall from, from, uh, from Duke. And, uh, and right now the first two bills are averaging $1,200 a month for city commission's portion of the square footage, which is about 4,700 square feet of this building. And so if, if I do the basic math, and again, it, the, the rates are gonna move around as they do, but if that's just an average, uh, I think, I think our, the actual cost this year for city commission will be about 11,000. We budget is 7,500. So, so part, of the, part of the increase that we're seeing in 24 is because uh, uh, 23 is actual is gonna be more. So, uh, and I wanna mention, we are still working through our electric estimates. Uh, we've got two, invoices for this building and we'll have another another one or two before we final the budget and we're going to continue to look at that uh, as we as we move into the budget process and, and kind of kind of refine it you know because we're we're still figuring out this building another side note is don't know exactly when we're going to have the information for our solar our solar uh, future savings is is not we're not getting that right now yeah, it's, it's not, not baked in it's and not I, baked in. I was right. going to ask uh, Jorge if he could just come up and explain what you explain for the benefit of the entire commission, how that all fits in in the future, what you're looking at doing. No. Okay, let's try it again. Um, yes, I, I shared with uh, the mayor during the agenda review yesterday that we had just met last week with Duke Energy, um, specific to some of our other facilities, uh, the water plant, EOC, and things like that. And what we've been comparing and speaking with our executive uh, uh, representative, uh, Mike Malley with Duke, is um, what makes sense with respect to those facilities that have solar installed on them. For example, the water plant, we could cover the entire roof surface of the building with solar and it would never be a net zero building. But yet, um, when we did the rebuild of the water plant, that was switched over from what's called standby generation, which is you get a credit for using power on off-peak hours. We can fabricate water in the middle of the night when there's not a peak demand. And so we get a credit from Duke from, for doing so. When we installed solar on that building during the, the retrofit uh, restoration of the water plant, we were switched over to what's called net metering, which is when you, you have the ability to sell power back to Duke. But the issue is, is on a facility that has that kind of a power demand, the odds of the amount of power that we're gonna sell back doesn't outweigh the credit that we're getting for being on standby generation. So in effect, by switching to net metering, we hindered ourselves on the credit that we're getting from Duke. Um, I gave them a hard time. I, I explained that, that they're essentially a used car salesman. They want us to pay retail for the new car, but they're only gonna pay us wholesale for the one we trade in. So it's the same thing with power, is we have to pay them the retail rate for power, but when we sell it back to them, we're only getting a retail or a wholesale rate on the power. So we've asked that that facility be switched over to standby generation. And uh, Manhattan and their subconsultant for, um, for this building has been waiting for the ability to apply for how we want this building done. We expect this building to be at 56% solar powered. Right now, although the, the units are installed, um, they're not operational as far as, as using the solar power because we've got to set up the, the metering. Um, and so we've given that direction based on the meeting that we had with Duke last week. We want this to be set up on standby generation. They can actually have it so it switches automatically since this is not a 24 seven operation as the water plant is. So we will realize the savings once the solar system goes online for this building, but we're not yet, not there yet. So from a finance perspective, all they can do is based on the two or three months of uh, historic utility bills that we've gotten from Duke to project for 24. So we're hopeful that during the course of 24, those uh, Duke utility electric bills will actually go down for this building. So none of that has been factored into the budget is Correct. the point. Correct. Okay. Uh, questions? Comments? Questions? Mm -hmm. 
So are we using solar off of this building now? I just, I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't sure I... Not yet, no. So nothing is being produced off of this building? It's not set up yet, correct. Ooh. When can we, we should... That you might as well just sit, Jorge. Yeah. This is why I had you do it right up front, so yes. we could get it all out of the way. Um, yes, so we've just provided that direction to Manhattan. They've got their solar uh, subcontractor uh, now making that application to Duke. So as soon as they set up the metering, then we can start getting the credit, and, this, and the system will be turned on. Okay, so nothing holding it up right now. It's no, just it's, it's installed, it's in place, it's just not operational. because and that should be pretty quick, right? It should be. We, we can hope. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Anything? Anything? Okay. Thank you, Jorge. Okay. Uh, next is the custodial custodial services. Thank you. The custodial services in the current draft budget is uh, pretty much flat. You know, it's it's we're bu it's budgeting right now at fifteen point seven hundred forty. Fifteen thousand seven hundred forty dollars, and last in current year is fifteen seven ninety. So, that right now is is pretty much flat year over year at this point. Um, the other one I wanted to mention was other current charges. Um, that is, we, we have an increase in twenty four over twenty three, of fifty two hundred, and that was uh, the, the increased budget for the sister, for sister city program of about $5,000, that's what that increase is for. We, we rebudgeted more to, to cover that in 24. And that's because we have the visit, Jennifer? The visit and we're going there as well. Well, that's shown somewhere else, mm -hmm. I thought. I thought that was shown somewhere else. Oh, yeah, I mean. What, what else is in other, is what here. else, what's all in? It's going from 5,000 to 10,000 in that one place. Mm -hmm. And that's separate from travel, so I'm just, right. that's mm -hmm. really the question. Yeah, because under travel there is a if you not on this page, but the 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 right. other page in travel, there's forty nine hundred for this for the sister city thing, mm -hmm. and then in this area, well maybe that's where it is. It says sister city is five thousand this year, twenty ten thousand. So maybe that is the fifty nine forty nine hundred. That's under other current charges, the other one is travel. Right, but if you look at this breakdown. The, the 4,900 is for travel there. 5,000 right. is if somebody's traveling here. Here. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, right. So you'll have both available next year. Which is unusual, as you know, we don't usually right. do that it's in usually one year, supposed to be every other year, on whatever it is. Because of the pipe band, that's how that. Right. Worked out. Okay, so what, what else is in those uh, operating or other current charges? We've got, uh, and if you don't know now, that's fine. You can tell us. So we've got, yeah, we've, I can tell you real quick. We've got uh, 1700 for, uh, you know, some of the detail, uh, quarterly breakfast, mills, commission meetings, swearing in ceremonies. Uh, refreshments, that kind of thing. Christmas commission retreat, seventeen hundred and twenty-four. Sister cities is ten thousand, and then uh, flowers of uh, gotcha. four, fourteen hundred. Yeah. Okay. Anything? Yeah. Well, I guess I'm trying to understand. So we think we need ten thousand dollars because of altogether. What, what, I guess that's my question. What's right. The altogether? Ashley, what did you say? So altogether for next year, Sister City program, you guys going there, them coming here is 16,000. And that's because uh, this year you guys didn't really have anything going on, so we're rebudgeting the, uh, the funds for next year. Now we're rolling it over. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't want to you know, get into the weeds on this, but I get the 4,900 that's for our travel, the 10,000, that's what I don't understand how that breaks down. That we actually need $10,000 instead of five is okay for entertaining, I guess. Or is it a membership for Sister City? We do have a, we do have a Sister, yes, we do have that. But that's somewhere else, right? That's it's in the, place. yeah, the next that's attachment. All right, so you all break that down yeah. when you bring it back. Because that's so, why I said we won't kill you over it today. Mayor, yes, let me, if I may, then we will, when we come back on July um, 18th, then we'll lay out what we're, we're anticipating 
it will cost the city for the provost to come here, as well as our delegation to go to Scotland, yeah. as previously discussed by the city commission. Right, and we've said that people can use their travel budgets too. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, so. Okay. Um, anything else from anybody on other current charges? We'll get a layout of what that is and we can ask more questions later. I, um, I know that we, by the way, again, not to get in the weeds, but I do know that we upped our amounts on our flower orders because they were so low, our minimums, you know. Yes, so I'm, we did. I'm assuming that we upped the whole budget because of that. But if we didn't, we probably should look at that because we did up mm -hmm. what our minimum is. I mean, $50 gets you nothing. Right. right. It really does. Um, okay. Uh, then... Then the other item was the um, promotional activities, right? There was a pretty decent increase in that. I think that went towards our holiday party. That's yes, correct. we ran over by approximately 2,000 this last year, so we're increasing it. Okay. Because so the city commission throws the holiday party for the employees. Do we have a location? Please tell no, me. No, not yet. We better Yeah. hurry up. It's June. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Because remember last year we were like scrambling. Um, okay, so any other questions from the commission or things they want to bring forward? Vice Mayor, anything? Off of here, no, thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner? Commissioner? Nothing from you. Um, Jennifer, this is where we look at the whole aid organization to determine how much should be there. Yes. Yep. We're not recommending a change this year. The applications are out now for aid organizations. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. Rob, you got nothing? I saw that email. Okay. Okay. Well, here we go. Um, I guess maybe this would be the time for me to bring to you, and I'm not asking for any approvals of anything here. Um, most of you probably know that Vinny is retiring from the History Museum. It'll be at, at the end of this month or into next month. I can't remember. Probably into next month. Um, and they're working on hiring a new director. Um, he still has an interest in remaining to be our city historian um, and is maybe looking for a little space in our building to store some of his stuff. Um, and I mean, I do think there's some projects he can work on, like, you know, if we were doing it again later, like that time capsule. There's different historical things that we might need him for. Um, he's definitely looking for an ability to work with the city. I'm not saying that we have money for this, but I would just put it out to the city manager to try to look at that and see if there are contract opportunities there um, for him. I don't know where the money would come from. <laughs> I really don't. I don't even have a recommendation. Um, obviously, we know it can't be a lot of money at all, but I'm just saying. I don't even know what that might look like. I have no recommendations as to what that might look like. But I'm just bringing it up publicly because he's brought it up. And I just wanted to make sure everybody's aware. So you can take a look and see. I don't know if there is or isn't. So consensus direction from the city commission, the staff have a look at that or? I'm hearing nothing. Does that mean no? Well, I'm not trying to have you create something. Yeah, I'm, not. I'm not asking for that. I'm asking to see is there, can we use him in, in any way mm -hmm. for anything? That's it. So, and how can he continue to work with the in He won't. In that way as well. So they don't see that value? Well, he would contract with them as well. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. So two aspects of this, if I may, Mayor. 
I don't think space is an issue. We have we would have uh, space here for him to store. I think it's it's a benefit to the city to store historical documents as well. I don't think there's that much room at the um, at the history museum. Having been there a few times, I'm helping them with their executive director recruitment. Um, the other part is contractually whether or not um, uh, the city commission would like us to look into setting aside some funds for a historian, a city historian. So. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. I don't know what those kinds of things might be. Mm -hmm. But because I'm I'm way up here, I don't know what our needs are. Like I, like I just said, okay, the time capsule. It's a one-time thing, but it's still sort of historical in nature. That popped in my mind. I'm sure there are other things like when, you know, the Juneteenth event, and there's certain other things that I can see where he might work. But again, we've got other people doing it, so. All I'm saying is let's at least look at it. If there's a need, great. If there isn't, great. I, yes, ma'am. I do want to add one thing. <clears throat> I mean, I do think, you know, there's no better historian than Vinny. Vinny is a wealth of information on the need. He lives in God bless you. So that is certainly something I'd hate to lose. Um, I think the historic museum would hate to lose it too. I mean, yeah. he is a wealth. They of, have said they so will I, contract with him on projects. I think in the realm of, of talking about how you don't lose that you know, that um, um, institutional knowledge, um, I think that's an important conversation to have. Yeah, and I, again, I agree. I just don't know what that looks like, yeah. and, right. you know, I'm not asking us to give them a job, per se. That's not, not what I'm, mm -hmm. I just want to, same thing, I don't want to lose that, mm -hmm. and is there an opportunity to ensure that we don't? Yeah, Creative Especially way. until the new director gets up to speed. I mean, that's six months to a year. Right, you know, there's some transition time, I think. So I don't know what that looks like, and I'm happy to hear other colleagues' comments. I'm being very cautious because I'm not exactly sure what I'm asking for. I just want to make sure that we actually look at it. Right, I'm, Mayor. Actually, you're framing it very, very well. Just what can we do? I think that's great. I would also. We also need to look at the relationship that the museum has with their new director right. and when, what that relationship between that new director and Vinny might be. Uh, we, we, do, we don't want to put the new director at a disadvantage. Yes, I agree. You know, and, um, you know, because if, if Vinny stays around, everybody will go to Vinny. Right. And it will take that new director a lot longer to get up to speed. Um, so I, I, I think it's worth looking at. And it might be kind of a transition and, thing to me, you know, while that new director gets up and running and, because that new director, I mean, just as being their liaison, is going to have a lot administratively to work through right. that, you know, attention really needs to be paid, paid to. Right. As any new director or city manager or CEO or whatever has to do, they got to look at the internal organization before they can go out. Right. And maybe it's just some transition things. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really know. And, but, and if we do do this, I would, I would like it to be in conjunction with what the museum is doing so we see the full picture. Yes. Of, you know, what's our commitment versus what's the museum's commitment on that. So but I think it's worth looking at. I, I feel that way too as far as storage, <clears throat> storage goes. I just think having been on the board for 10 years, mm -hmm. I know how historical stuff can grow and take over. Uh, so I just want to be very cautious that we're in sync with the whole historic museum and that if we do provide some storage, you know, we're just cautious. We have our own. I mean, we just got asked for a $200,000 building to store in a protected building, which this is, um, fire equipment. So I just want to be, I want to be careful. I think, you know, and just think it through well, in big you know, picture, the, that's all. Just no, think it through in big picture. The other thing is, is maybe, I mean, if he does have like a bunch of documents, let's forget trinkets, okay? Well, then maybe maybe our assistance is helping to scan that stuff, so it's not taking up space. And again, that's staff time. I don't know. I'm just thinking outside the box. I don't know what no, that looks like. I think, in fairness, at one point, the Dunedin Museum had <coughs> a lot of stuff that our city clerk's office used to do in terms of preserving some things. So, you know, there's definitely a relationship there that's worth exploring to make sure we're. Or maybe it's him here scanning stuff. I, you know, I don't know. If I may, I think that, that Commissioner Freeney brings up a 
Very good point. I was talking about document storage. Yeah. Yeah, not I don't know. stuff. I, yeah, we yeah, don't so. know what he's got. Yeah, no, not yeah. artifacts. Yeah, no, that's what I was talking yeah. about, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Is it historical, or, or, or are we just hoarding now? <laughs> well, so I think all I of that. Try not to use that word. <laughs> I think we have to look at all of those things and determine, you know, what does that mean for us? And, and think through methodically. I'm not just trying to do somebody a favor. I want to make sure it's beneficial to us. I think, and, and you said it. Yeah. You said it best. She she just presented exactly exactly what we ought to look at, in my opinion. And I think we ought to, we ought to at least get input from the board of mm -hmm. down there. Right. And and again, uh, Commissioner Gao's concern is that's always a concern when you bring yeah. somebody new in. So you're just asking. Well, let's take a look at this and just see what. Yeah, and I do know, I do know that um, uh, the board in general, without any details. I have brought it to their attention. They want him to stay in the realm. They don't want him to go away. They want him to stay in the realm. They had no issue if he was doing some contract work with us. But I think we also have to understand what contract work is he doing with them. And just all of these things, I think. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just know that it's worth looking at. And no decision has to be made today. And Jennifer, unfortunately, we're putting you in the hot seat to see if there's something to figure out. <laughs> is that what the, yeah, that's what the cost of the pin, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you I go. See, great <laughs> managers. Great, <clears throat> great managers. Yeah. Yeah. Ma'am, I'm going to request to go back. Um, the, uh, yeah, the email you're referring to, yeah. um, I, I wasn't. It wasn't you weren't clear thinking to me. about it. I yeah. wasn't clear that this would be the right venue to do that in. But well, you <coughs> might want to now. Yeah, so to put this into context, and this is exactly correct, is, is that essentially with line items in there for the Fine Arts Center and for um, the museum, for the museum uh, I, I think it's absolutely appropriate that Dunedin Cares has a line item in there. Um, because what Dunedin Cares is doing is uh, a lot more than, than food pantry distribution. They're actually providing a social services component to the, our community. And I, I really do believe uh, that is something that, as the city of Dunedin, we should be sponsoring um, in, in some way, shape, or form. So. Um, I apologize for not being uh, quick on the uptake on that, but I thought well, there was I another asked. path here. So well, thank Try, you very much. Trying to nudge you. Ma'am, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate that. So um, I, understanding that we're not approving anything today, but I, I would like the staff to go back and take a look at how we might do that on a commensurate level with some of the other um, very, very important organizations in the community that we are sponsoring. Dunedin Cares is right up there on the list, so we need to look at that. So, thank you. Um, everybody okay with that? When we do that, I, whew, this is so hard. Um, I, we need to be mindful on the reason we broke out those specific organizations into line items, because they used to, all of them used to be part of aid organizations. And there was a specific reason why we broke those out. And so I just want city staff and the commission to be mindful of that and maybe go back and refresh our memories on that. And whether or not that reason that those were split out, uh, doesn't even cares as part of that. And I'm just going on the recollection of the reason we split them out was the idea of hopefully those organizations would be on their own at some point or at, at, at some point instead of establishing them as some highlight it was to assist to acknowledge what they were and the value they played in the in the community but also how they could be self-sustaining uh, outside the aid organizations and so i want to be careful if we put done even cares into that category what that means it, and 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 that that's my only concern over this well and to be honest <clears throat> I, we haven't really looked at them that way, even though that was kind of our reasoning. Um, but the other part of the reasoning was because we wanted to show that they are a permanent yes. partner right. for us. So for that piece of it, we talked 
full, full disclosure, we did talk about those things. But I think the other piece was to show that these guys don't have to, they know they're going to get something from us every year. Something. And maybe over time it becomes less, depending on the situation, but it was to show permanency and a, and a civic partnership. Right. So for that piece of it, Dunedin Cares certainly rises to that occasion. Yeah, and I, I would actually say I, I totally get your, your point, Commissioner Gao. Um, I would also say that each of those organizations brings something very special to the community um, that, you know, really enhance the, the, the community experience. And uh, that's, that's point number one. Point number two would be that uh, with, um, with the direction that Dunedin Cares is, is heading into, they're, they are much more than a food pantry now. They are providing uh, social services in terms of, of uh, Medicare, Medicaid, counseling, a uh, whole host of things. And so the scope of their mission uh, has grown. And I think by virtue of that, and without any sort of uh, commensurate uh, type of offering at the, at the city level, I, I think we need to be mindful of the fact that they are providing a very, very important service to, to need it, so. And Commissioner, I can't disagree with, I, I support everything that you've said. And that's why when I started my comments, it was how hard this is. Um, and so it's just a matter of I don't know that we need to codify, but we at least as a commission need to have some understanding on the real person, on the real reason why they were separated from the aid to org. And if it's truly just because they are important to our community, then that should be the only reason that they're there. And, and that's fine. And then since we're on that subject, and certainly Dunning Cares has really expanded what they're trying to do and become part of the, the social integrity of our community, are there any measurements that, that Dunedin Cares is doing as far as the impact they're having in our community? I know they've historically been kind of reluctant to that. They just wanted to help. And that's wonderful, and they should continue to do that. But are there some matrix so that we can proudly support them and say this is the impact they're having on our community by some sort of measurements? I know that uh, my, and I'm a commissioner, I mentioned it this to you um, a little while ago. Peanut butter and jelly. But, well, but I had a conversation, you know, to Pat. My, I had a wonderful conversation with my daughter, um, master's in, in public health on, on Dunedin Cares, and she just went off in all kinds of excitement on what we could do with Dunedin Cares and the impact that could have on the community and how we're measuring that and partnering with uh, USF Public Health, which is a, a, a school that is really up and coming. And there are all kinds of volunteers to do studies and measurements. You've got all kinds of students that would love to take a bite of that apple. And so um, uh, awesome. all that, yeah, so it's just wonderful things from Dunning Cares. So any of my comments are not to be taken in any way slighting that organization because it is such a valuable part of who we are as a community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Vice Mayor? Yes, yeah, so we, um, I appreciate this, this uh, conversation back and forth. Um, when I, w I was a very strong supporter, as you all recall, of, of it being a line item for, uh, for those two organizations. And of course, we, there's buildings involved and, and all of that kind of thing with those organizations. And as Commissioner Walker said, I mean, you know, they just, they just really increase the passion of, of a culture within our, within our city, both of them. And, and that's on one side. On this side, um, they don't necessarily have to be similar. Um, the Dunedin Cares does not have to be similar to, to those two. Um, but I think we, we ought to look at their budget, and I think we ought to make sure that we have no one in our city here not receiving the benefits that they can provide. And let's just start with food. Um, we have so many different people involved with food. I know the churches used to all do, all do. Uh, in fact, there was an RSC, and, and the churches used to collect this food, and they'd go around, and people would go around to these different organizations. Well, now, now we have one organization that they can go to. So um, I know I just came from, what, Hope, Hope over in Clearwater. I uh, went there last, last week for, for a full tour of, of the services that they provide, sort of in conjunction then with what 
and Eden Cares is talking about doing here. And I think, I think maybe, maybe we need to listen uh, a little bit to what they're doing um, and then take a look <coughs> at this budget um, to see, you know, where, does that, where would that money come from if, if we wanted to provide additional income. But again, no one should be going hungry um, in the city. And they carved out a nice little swath, and we know where that is. And we have people that are, that are hurting in Dunedin, and we've talked about that before. <coughs> so I, I think I, I, another look just at, for that organization I would do us no harm, not in relationship or counter of the other two, uh, but just in relationship to what it is that we wish to provide in, in this city. So the other two are very, very important, and now we have a third one that's coming. Remember, it came from the social, uh, social services. Um, committee. Uh, Ed broke out, we did the, we did the 501c3, uh, and then we at that time said, we don't want anybody going hungry here, and this is the way we'll do this. And it was going to be a, a separate organization, and they were going to go out and collect these funds. Well, now we're supporting them, and, uh, and, and that's great. I don't know whether this number is, is, is large enough or not, but I know we have people that are not, that are, that are hurting. So, I, I think we ought, I think we ought to look at this. Um, maybe maybe just pull it out and just look at it as a separate thing that we just sort of discovered. Um, although it's been there all along and it's been in front of us all along. I know our church is doing it this week. Um, big drive again. So the drives continue. Um, let, let's take it, let's do take a look at it. Let's look at it. That's part. Yeah, I have a few stuck comments. <clears throat> well. I remember well when Art Center and History Museum were pulled away because, if you recall, and it was actually, I think, I wasn't here, but I think at one point um, the aid to private organizations, nonprofits, got put together from, for years. For as far back as the eye can see, the Art Center had a contribution, the History Museum had a contribution, and then they got put into, you know, the barrel with everybody. And that caused, obviously, a lot of resentment because they'd been long, long, long standing historical partners. And it had the potential effect on grants, um, you know, by, by being, you know, and, you know I'm particularly, I, I'm a supporter of both history and the art. And, but with the art center, I always say people would, would literally kill to have the deal that we have for a small amount of contribution and the, the investment that's been put back into our community. So it's just, you know, pennies on the dollar, and, and of course, they were put in the barrel to compete with everybody else, and that caused a lot of hard feelings, and it put us, because we were originally on the committee making these choices about where the aid went, it put all, uh, whoever was the unfortunate commissioner to be on the committee for the aid organizations got put in a horrible position. So that's when we said, no, 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 these are long, long, long standing historical partners. Let's not do that. It, you know, just at some point it just felt kind of gamey for them. So then we go to the everybody else is competing for dollars. Um, certainly, uh, you know, big supporter of Deneen Cares. Um, when the Social Service Committee first got formed, I was actually Director of Health and Human Services for Pinellas County, overseeing a lot of social services stuff throughout the county. They asked me to come and speak. And, you know, they were motivated, they wanted to do things, and obviously Ed was, was great at, I think, one of the you know, the key people in getting uh, Denning Cares. And I think as we've moved through aid organizations, we've always, each commission has kind of given Denning Cares the top spot because of what they do. They've always kind of had that. Um, so that being said, you know, I think we just have to be careful because if, if we put somebody like that in there, even though they're, they're doing something really important for people here, I don't know, does the Scottish Arts Foundation feel like they should be a long time historical? You know, yeah, I, I just. Oh, yeah, you're going to hear it right I just after think this that's, meeting. You probably already have an email. That being said, I think we approach it differently a little bit. It's like, what is our philosophy on helping people in the city of Dunedin, whether it's food, whether it's mental health, whether it's housing? Um, you know, I, I mean, and, and are we making sure we're thinking about all the things that are available countywide as well? Uh, because, of course, there's a, there's a significant amount of money that's put from a countywide budget to help with those things. And, and, of course, we give money to 211 in a very modest way, and that helps people connect with some of those things. So I think if we're going to look at this, too, 
that's the way we should look at it. Is like, you know, if we're going to kind of go down a little bit of this road, um, and Dunedin Cares has been just a, a model of trying to take us there a little bit, um, you know, what, what's going to be our philosophy with that? How far down? And, and are we making sure we're, we're making sure that we're, um, uh, how do I want to say, linking it with other services throughout the county and being smart about how we're, how we're headed. Um, and I say that as somebody who sat in that seat as a director on countywide programs and would see different nonprofits start up and almost be competing with each other. Um, so, and I'm not suggesting that with Dunedin Cares. I think Dunedin Cares has done an amazing job of doing its own great thing for Dunedin. Um, but again, I just say it might be a bigger conversation for us. And I appreciate the fact that you brought it up because I think it, it may be time for that conversation because there are definitely are a lot of needs out there. Not just food, mental health. Mental health is huge. So. You know, if I can just add something, I mean, maybe, and again, you know, we're kind of getting down to the wire because we're in June, mm -hmm. right? And everybody's, you all have already had, I don't know, any number of meetings about. Countless. Right, about budget stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this is what should happen, but maybe it's just giving them the line item of what we already normally give. You know what I'm saying? So that it's a, you know, or maybe it's deciding that this kind of going through your process of what you just described and what all of you just described and just saying, you know, I mean, I know what they asked for in their email and we already know that's just not possible. I mean, unless somebody else is going to tell me it is. But maybe it, it is just a point of saying this is a partner you know, discussing, saying, okay, this is a long-term partner that we, that we feel is necessary that should be listed individually. I, I don't know. Because we are so far along in the budget game. So it just takes what's projected to give to them and giving, putting it into their own line item. So in the future, we can start talking about that amount because we may not have the time this year to address it. But once it's a line item, then it gets addressed automatically when you start looking at it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm, I'm just throwing ideas out there. You know, it's baby steps. It's just like me bringing up the, the, the history thing. I totally understand. We don't have extra money right now. I get it. Especially out of the general fund. Um, so maybe it's just a baby step. I, I don't know. I, I leave that up to the conversations. Rob, you'll obviously be working with Jennifer. And well, Rob, I know, and I'm just going to say this. I wrote down, and I'm, I think, you know, based on just even the request, I mean, for me, because I haven't been over there for a little bit. I want to go over there, and I want to meet with them, and I want to make sure I understand their, their mission, because I, you know, used to be the liaison and kept up somewhat, but of late, I have not, and I want to kind yeah, of I have that either. discussion with them, so. Yeah, I would, I'd highly encourage that. Um, you know, I, I was, first of all, I impressed of, of just the throughput they're doing with very minimalistic uh, facilities in a, a facility that's really being held together by duct tape. Um, and, but, you know, um, I, I was extremely impressed, not to repeat myself, but I was extremely impressed with how they have really broadened their, their, their scope of offerings um, and proactively gotten people to come and donate their time, you know, from, from mental health counselors to, uh, you know, insurance experts. And I, I think that part's significantly important. But, you know, we kind of we have this, um, you know, the community has this, this incredible wealth of things that make this community so unique. You know, and I don't want to, you know, needing cares is very important. I certainly don't want to diminish the, you know, Dunedin Fine Arts Center because there's, there's hard, I don't, to the best of my knowledge, there's nothing quite like the Fine Arts Center in no, any other isn't. community. No, no. And the largest teaching establishment in the state. It, it's amazing. So, you know, as a city, you know, I, I strongly believe that we should be supporting these efforts, but I understand that we have a finite, you know, amount of resources, finite budget, and, uh, you know, we have to make some decisions, 
but you know, in my opinion, you know, the organizations on here all have a very unique contribution to the city of Dunedin, and you know, I think uh, we'll have to make some decisions. Certainly, we're all going to be having discussions, and uh, but I, I think this is an important dialogue because, again, to the point of Dunedin Cares, I, I think that they've reached a level where we need to consider that. So. Yeah. Jennifer, do you feel like you understand what we're saying? I do. I think we have consensus direction to pull out Dean Cares to name it something other than probably these. Um, and I don't think we have direction as far as, as the amount to dedicate to it. No. So um, I think what I'd like to do as staff is just look at it historically, because sometimes, as you know, I mean, we, we purchased a van or, you know, and, yeah. and a walk-in cooler and those types of things. So I just want to get with staff to find out what we've done in the past to make a recommendation for the future. Well, and I'm also going to say, you know, one of the things that never gets shown on our budget is, you know, what we're spending on the buildings for the Art Center and the History Museum. I think those things need to be in... I don't know where we show that. I don't remember where we show that anymore. It used to be all together, like it was on a page somewhere. I mean, I think it well, would be good on here, even if it's just a footnote. We typically, actually, Mayor, when we bring back aid to organizations to you, that's when you see those figures. Because yeah. it's important to know how much we're, we're spending in kind. Right. And, and, that's, and maybe that's just saying, maybe those are some of the opportunities we have with Dunedin Cares, where it's <laughs> somewhat in kind. What if it is us applying for a grant and doing the work for that for them? Mm -hmm. Or what if it's... You know, we can be creative. It doesn't have to be cash all day. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, could be effort, even though I totally understand that we are so short-staffed that effort is even problematic in some, in some ways. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I think we could be creative on it. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I don't know yeah, what I those, agree. I don't know what those needs might be. You know, that would be something that you would have to, Right. Mm -hmm. Of course, they've been really good at getting in kind from different ways and different businesses. Yeah. They really, yeah. Mm -hmm. They've been. Oh. Well, and that's great. Yeah, they have been extremely. They have. Aggressive. They are. They're wonderful. Been great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, everybody okay with where we are? Everybody feel like they're going to come back with that narrative and Jennifer's going to look at Dane Cares and Vinny. History stuff. Okay. See what's what. Um, okay. All right. So now we'll go to informational informational items. Um, didn't get any emails, so don't know if there was commission discussion from anybody. Didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. So we'll jump to the city clerk's update. Anything? No. Okay. Uh, city manager's update. <laughs> Jennifer, anything you want to share? I do. Just a few things. Yeah, I, I kind of thought so. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I just recently fin uh, finished my employee communications meetings. Uh, I met with, um, hopefully I didn't miss any, every employee in the city by department or by division. Uh, this year they elected to come here, which w was nice. Typically I go there and I'll do that again. I like to go to their workplaces and, and, and meet with them there. I went over the, uh, the current status of the class and comp study, and I actually went back to the beginning of the class and comp study to, to talk a little bit about uh, the, 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 the genesis of, of the class and comp study itself, which, as you know, started during employee communications, uh, and then um, and talk about exactly what our status is right now. I talked to them a little bit about a, a budget, our budget, fiscal year 2024, and your deliberations as far as that budget goes. I talked to them about our Juneteenth celebration, which I'm going to speak about in a moment, um, and then also talk about recruitment uh, in the city and our current uh, 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 situation as far as labor shortages go, and uh, had some really good discussions with the employees as far as ideas uh, uh, to recruit and retain um, our employees, and some of that we're going to put into play. Uh, others. We can't. I mean, it's just not f financially feasible, but some really good suggestions. Uh, and I, then I'll go back to the employees again after we've adopted the budget and, um, and meet with them, as I said, in their workplaces. Um, 
you know, the current situation in our, in, with our employees is they want the class and comp study to be finished, and we're, we're zeroing in on that, if you So will. do we. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, that's what I told them. The commission so is, is dogging that. I think we're setting up meetings. We're going to be meeting with Commissioner Franey here shortly. Um, they, um, they want us to, to continue uh, aggressive recruitment. Uh, they want us to plug those holes, which we are. And I shared with them that, that we are all competing uh, in this labor market. Every city, the county, this, there's an article, interesting article in the state as well. And so, um, uh, that, but that we will continue to do our best. Uh, overall, I mean, we have, as you know, uh, just one of the best workforces, I feel, in, in, in the entire state. Uh, they ask really good questions. Um, and those questions that I couldn't answer, I, I would email later on, but I think we got all of them. This one, I had all the directors sitting in on those meetings as well, and that was really, and their supervisors, and that was really very helpful. Sometimes I like to meet just with them, uh, but this time uh, the directors were there, and as I said, that was very helpful. We had a Hurricane Expo, uh, which was very well attended, um, and uh, I'm grateful to the Chamber of Commerce uh, and to Sue and Nicole for putting that Hurricane Expo on. I think it was really very helpful. The, uh, we also did our hurricane drill, um, and that is a drill that we do in-house to, to, pre to prepare for hurricane season. One of the things that, that we're talking about uh, uh, right now is activating this building when there is a hurricane in terms of during the, the storm, if it's a Category 3 or less, and after as well. We have a beacon now in the community that we can use to serve our community that we haven't had before in terms of setting up cooling stations, which we really needed during Irma when people were, were out of power as far as setting up a centralized location for FEMA and uh, small business aid and those types of things. So uh, we talked cell a lot about that. Cell phone plug-in. Yes, cell phone plug-in. We, we, yeah, we're actually uh, reviewing cooling stations uh, and cell phone plug-in yeah. in that opportunity. But really the entire building is an opportunity for a cooling station because we, we have a, the generator. Um, and the building is constructed for a, for a Category 3. It's not a shelter. Uh, but it will, should withstand an even stronger storm and be operational after that. So we have a, an excellent opportunity here. Um, and just the, the Juneteenth event that we had last Thursday, I know that, that a few of you were able to attend and, and we're grateful for that. The, it was well attended by our employees. I think about 200 of our employees were able to attend. Uh, we did a series of, of uh, in-service um, uh, community events in the morning, if you will. Um, I did the Habitat for Humanity, and I can tell you it's, it's warm out there. It really is. We oh, painted, it is. Twelve of us painted an entire house in an hour and a half, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Commissioner Gao was there. Um, and we had a number of other events. We cleaned up um, the entire causeway. A group of employees cleaned up. Did you do that, Catherine? Yeah, Catherine was on the causeway. On my way to my, um, my house painting event, I, I drove along County Road 1, and uh, employees from the water treatment plant were cleaning up the road, picking up trash. On my way back, um, and this is this is a sight that just that honestly brings tears to my eyes. Um, on the way back, those same employees were all the way down by Virginia, on County Road One, cleaning up trash. Yeah, so you know, in the heat, and then they all got here and had lunch, and everybody had such a great app, such a great attitude. We had a really good time together, which is important uh, because we are we have so many different uh, facilities here in Dunedin. We were able to to consolidate a lot of departments here, but still we have uh, facilities and those employees never see each other and never have a chance to talk about uh, their, their roles in the city. And then the diversity jeopardy was just a lot of fun. Just, it really was. I was actually in third place for about two questions and then, <laughs> yeah, fell off the page entirely. But um, Chief Naylor from the fire department won and he was awarded 10 hours of um, leave time, which he donated to someone nice. who needed it. Yes. So it's that kind of a thing that we were, able to, to uh, accommodate and enjoy, really enjoy the day. Uh, and then, of course, the Pride events this, this month, and there's just so much going on in the city, and there's, there's, it's just a great time, I think, uh, over the summer uh, in all the events that we're having, and I'm really, I'm really enjoying them. And they really convey what Dunedin is, I feel. So thank you, Mayor. Okay, any questions here to the city manager? Anything you want to know about? Or? No? Can't think of anything right now. Shocker. <laughs> Thank you. No? Okay. Uh, city attorney update. <clears throat> Nothing for you this week. When are you? When will you bring back the full legislative thing? It'll be in July, um, and I think that I was talking with Nicole about 
when it will be presented because we're going to divide it up like, was, like what was done last year. And so I think she's looking at a date either in July or in September. Well, it's got to be July, I think, I if we're going to respond to anything. September is... Yeah, it's in effect at that point. I mean, most of the laws will right. be in effect. Right, I just think if we're going to... And I don't mean just <laughs> respond by letter, but I mean mm -hmm. respond to, like, fix. Right. Well, my comprehensive... All of those things are happening. Yes. Okay. That review will come out and be circulated to the city manager, and then she can circulate to the different departments. But as far as a presentation for the commission on what's happened this last... I, I think we need... I mean, don't you guys agree? We need to know this stuff in July versus September? I, I think anything yeah, and even if we have to break, if even if you have to break it up a little bit, okay. like if you all don't have time because of other things, put the more important things in July and less important things in September. Really, I don't think we have to know every little thing. It's the stuff that affects us. Yeah. Right. So if you have to break it up a little bit, I mean, and that's okay too, because okay. it takes time. I, I get it to put it together. Mm -hmm. I, I just mean, dropped my pin, but anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll get something to you in July. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, uh, back to city manager. When are we going to see the class in comp study? <laughs> She's, she doesn't want to get to the microphone. No, I dropped my pin. <laughs> When, when are we going to see that class in comp study? So right now um, we're, we're continuing to meet in our subcommittee, which is a larger, uh, the, the department directors of the larger departments, Jorge and myself. At the end of June, uh, which we're, we're, we're getting very close to, we're going to have a draft of the class in comp study because uh, the finance needs it as they, as they develop the budget for the July 18th. So we need that locked down um, by the end of June. We will, we're going to sit with uh, Commissioner Franey as your liaison here, as I said, sooner than mm -hmm. later, and then um, we're going to uh, <coughs> sit with each of you individually to go over the class and comp study, and we will have um, something to the, to the uh, employees as soon as we can in July, probably first, second week of July. We're going to have a town hall meeting with the employees, as we've done before, to go over the structure because, and we'll probably do it with all of you when we meet with you individually to go over the structure, and at that point, the department directors will have in their hand the results of the class and comp study, and then they will sit down with their employees. Last week, uh, that subcommittee that I'm talking about, or the committee, went uh, over each individual position. Um, I think there are 375 of them. And so, um, like I said, we're zeroing in on it, um, and, and we're um, looking to get the draft out beginning of July is the long, long answer to your question. So when we would then talk about it as a group are you thinking august then because it probably won't be ready for our july budget meeting. so no we're going to we need the numbers for that july and that's going to be an approximate but we need to call a special meeting to talk to you all about it gotcha yeah so it'll be a separate yes okay just remember that um you know right. we only have the one meeting i think in august and right. a lot of us are going on vacation and so you might want to try to grab a date now, mm -hmm. yeah, because I mean, I know I'm going to be out of town, and I, I think I might be out of town the same day we're having our meeting. I don't know for August. I mean, I'm, I have a family wedding that's planned, and mm -hmm. I'm not missing it. Okay. So, you know. We'll get it scheduled. Yeah, just mm -hmm. something. I mean, even if you have to change it, it just gets something. Right. But I just want to say a town hall meeting for the employees. It won't be a town hall meeting. Oh, no. As I'm, defined by your rules and procedures. Oh, no, I understand. Right. Okay. We understand. Okay. okay. What's the town hall meeting for the employees? So that we d we've done it before. We do a Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting, and it's all of the employees in all of their workplaces, and we go over uh, the, the class and comp study, the structure of the class and comp study. And then this time we'll do that again, the structure of the class and comp study. And then the department directors and supervisors will meet in their workplace with the results of their particular department. All of you will have that information in hand prior to that meeting. Okay, well, it's dynamite, so mm -hmm. I'll trust you guys to handle it the way you think you should. Cause it's not easy. Well, it is. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very, uh, you, know, cause, you know, there's good news <clears throat> and bad news. Mm -hmm. And how that gets relayed is really important. But that's you guys' job. Well, so. sometimes in person can be better. Well, that's what I mean. Versus the Zoom. You well, know, that's but what I mean. Small on you. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, depending on how the story's going to go. Those are really good. Okay. 
resounding sounds that last a long time. So, anyway. Okay, cool. All right, we'll go to commission comments. Um, Vice Mayor, any updates on your liaison positions? I really do not. We have a meeting coming up uh, next week, so uh, for that, for the liaison, uh, really, really nothing at this point in time. And we're looking forward to the Florida League of Cities to kick off the year. Okay. Commissioner Gow, anything from your liaison? Uh, thank you, Mary. Yeah, all kinds of exciting stuff, even in uh, during the summer. Uh, the, uh, the pipe band just got back from the uh, Scottish Festival and Highland Games, which is in Chicago. And I know when we talk about the, the city band, we talk about it as plural, but there's actually uh, three different bands within that, that category, and it's grade one, grade three, and grade four, and all three bands went. So the entire city band went. Uh, they delivered strong performances, and they won best drum corps and won uh, best bass section. So kudos to the city band. Very proud that they're ambassadors to the city of Dunedin. So what's up next for them is the Glengarry Highland Games, which is in uh, Maxville, uh, Canada. And that is August 4th and 5th, and those are the North American Championships. Where is that in Canada? <clears throat> uh, Maxville. Where is that? Which is it's like an hour out of Toronto or closer, something? Well, I think it's closer to Ontario than it is. Well, Toronto's in Ontario, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. Yes. I don't know. I'm, I'm American. Yeah, I'm, I, don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about I an can hour. almost sing the national anthem. If it's anthem. the same place they've done it before, it's like an hour and a half out of Toronto, because I kept trying to get us to, to try to coordinate our Toronto trip with when they would be okay. in Canada so we could try to... Coordinate but it, as well. But, it, you know, it's like, okay, then you got to get a bus and you got to... It's not as easy as it sounds. Right, it, it's a whole thing. It's never as easy as it sounds. Right. But it might be something to consider in the future for all of you, you know, because again, going to Scotland is not something you can do that often, right. especially as a group. So, you know, that might be an option in the future is to try to combine that, you know. That'll work, that'll work. And so for uh, the, the North American Championships, that is grade one only that's going. Uh, certainly for the most part, these individual band members a lot of it is on their actual dime, and they're taking away time from their families, time from their work, <coughs> and so it's a dedication they have to the band. Uh, with, the, with the grade one, I know we talk about it fairly frequently, but it's always nice to just remind everybody that there's only one other grade one band in the United States, and so there is very few opportunities that that band has to compete against the other grade one, and that's the, that is the prime time to kind of get that measuring point on where we are as a band as we prepare for Scotland. And, and so uh, they have to make these long journeys. They have to go to Chicago. They have to go to Maxwell. They have to go to Canada uh, just to compete with those other bands. And so just kudos to them. Looking forward to uh, great success there. Um, also just uh, PSTA, we were talking about legislative stuff. And I know that there is... Um, the PSTA didn't get their $500,000 uh, that they wanted to for electrification. But one of the other bills, um, which was Senate Bill 256, which, um, which makes it so that organizations can have automatic payroll deduction for union dues, is impacting PSTA. And so, uh, and one of the ways it impacts it, I mean, it, it's easy to move away from that, that it won't be part of the payroll deduction, but we actually have uh, federal grants that are tied to that. And so if they don't offer that, then they're um, violating the, the grant. And so they're trying to weave their way through that. And so just wanted to, it's just informational, nothing we can do about it, but they're doing well with their SEIU union, they're having challenges. Not with the union, they're just trying to figure out how to rewrite the grants, how to rewrite the contracts, and how it all works together. Uh, but the real challenge is with their ATU union. Um, but right now, all of our grants, we just have one that's coming due soon. So there's nothing right now that we're in violation. We need to fix it quick. It's just the ability of giving us the ability to be viable for future grants. And so that's all that I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner? Yes. Um, well, a couple things. I've thought our Juneteenth 
you, Juneteenth events were great. Am I saying that right? Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. yesterday, okay. anyway. was, yesterday was amazing. Yesterday was amazing with the dedication of the plaque. And that, I'm so sorry. My God, we uh, got a flat tire on the way. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. You, well, you That's were, why I wasn't there. I was texting yeah. Teresa, I'm going to be late if I can even make it. And that was particularly bonding to the African American community that lived here, grew up here, went to school here, had their church here. You know, that was just, it was, it was really cool. It was really cool. I mean, I, it was, it was, a, a spe it was special. Um, uh, also, you know, we've had some of our pride events, but pride events are continuing. The gala was uh, phenomenal. It, it was phenomenal. It really it was. It really was good. Even the you know, location. Kudos I to it was Achieva. Achieva was great with offering up a location and it worked really, really it well. Did. Yeah, it did. It did. And um, um, it was great. It was, and again, it, it just, it, it was a great crowd, but it felt more intimate, even though I think it was the same crowd as last year. You weren't there last year, so, you know, you know. So. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I thought those were good, but just remember there's a lot of Pride events still going on. I think like Wednesday, Sanu, um, Thursday, unfortunately, we'll have our meeting, but they're doing the movies at the Scottish American uh, Society, which I hate to miss that one. That's the best one, but unfortunately it's in conflict. And uh, then, you know, I, I know that uh, Friday is the golf cart parade and the um, Blue Jay game and fireworks and, you know, and my mom arrives in Dunedin, by the way, saying <laughs> uh, to live here permanently. Yep, that's um, a community and, announcement. Yeah, that's a community announcement. Um, and, um, and then Monday is Pisces has an event. Yeah, we're going Monday to that because that's uh, brand new. That's brand new. She's and excited about Crown it. And Bowl will, will be having a closeout event. I think we won't House be here there got for that. One. Dunedin Lanes has one, so. Yeah, we won't be here for the Crown and Bowl. Yeah. I think we leave that Thursday right. to go to Toronto. Anyway, lots going on, so please, you know, try to take part. It's uh, people are excited and they've jumped in, and that's that's a that's a great thing. Um, the one thing I did want to say, of course, we all there's three of us right here, I think, um, Rob and the mayor and I, um, who will be going to on the Toronto trip this year. Um, I have actually two meetings while I'm there as my role is liaison. Um, I'll be meeting with Mark Shapiro, just you know, general, regular meeting, just about how things are going and from his side and our side. Um, and, uh, and then uh, we actually have a meeting on the Jaywalk art project that was expected to be at the stadium, but it kind of got stalled out because the Jays wanted to have some input from their top leadership, so we've got a meeting set for, uh, for that. And actually Elizabeth Brinklow is gonna be coming along with the chamber group, so she'll be in that meeting with me explaining to some some of them showing that what that is so maybe we can get that project moving um so i think that's it other than that no i just think that's it okay thank you commissioner yeah i'll just echo the fact uh, the um the event yesterday the plaque installation was was amazing and uh i there were a few poignant moments but the one where the um the, the folks that had lived in that area had provided this diagram of when Pinellas Trail was actually a railroad track and they were listing all the, the homes and businesses that went up and down that particular area. That really, really put a big explanation point on the impact of our African American community to this town. And uh, it, was a, it was very, very touching for me. Um, and uh, yes, the gala was uh, was 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 great, and uh, it, I think the venue was good. Turnout was uh, commensurate with last year, and uh, yeah, it was a really enjoyable night. Um, so uh, one thing I do have to ask my colleagues here. So as you all are aware, I was not on the commission last year, and. Uh, about a year ago at this time, we made plans to be out of town uh, the week of the 10th, uh, which... Of August or July? July. And so what that impacts is the, um, is the workshop and the regular meeting. And uh, I've asked the staff to see if we can get set up on Zoom, but uh, I certainly would uh, uh, like your all's approval for me to Zoom in for the meeting on the 11th and the 13th. Okay, that's not the budget thing, right? That's no, just that's a normal meeting. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And we're, we've got the marina uh, master plan on Tuesday, and then um, there's the uh, the rate approval, I believe, which is happening on Thursday. So I'd, I'd like to be part of that meeting, if at all possible. I don't have a problem with it. As long as we have a, ma um, a majority here, it's fine, right? Yes. I'm looking at Jennifer Cowan. As long as you have a majority a here, majority. physically present. You guys okay? Are you going to be taking action at that meeting? Yes. And, the, and, and I'm sorry, but the ones that are virtual, do you all, pursuant to your rules, I'll have to look it up, do you allow them to vote virtually? Or mm -hmm. for those yeah, we don't have anything yeah. in there about that, okay. per se. We just going by whatever the state laws are about it's Zoom. Well, test virtual no, but I mean, building. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because Commissioner Franey had to be on Zoom once I or twice. I did it from Nantucket, like last year. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's I think it's okay because sometimes these things are going to conflict. I think it's really hard if you're doing it for an all-day workshop. Yeah. That's a completely different thing. Well, it's hard for for the person because you can't really articulate as much as you want. Right. To, or interrupt no. from any of us that are irritating you or anything. Like yeah, but but please rest assured now that I am on the commission, I will make sure that my <laughs> personal plans align with the commission schedule. It's okay. So, yeah. no. No. It no. happens anyway. sometimes. Yeah. It's just like you can't plan when you're and I'm happy to be kids getting too, married or something. <laughs> right. So you know what I'm saying? We, that's kind of why we look at the calendar every year. It's like, oh, right. yeah. you know. Um, anything else? Uh, no, ma'am. That's it. Okay, so, uh, okay, so, um, forward Pinellas, uh, the Clearwater Ferries appropriation for a million dollars to go to towards two new ferries was not vetoed. Oh. PSDA's stuff was vetoed, but... <laughs> the, and so, uh, I'm sorry, Mayor. Could you repeat that? I Just, said PSDA stuff was vetoed. No, I, I don't repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Thanks. We're shocked. We're we're all very shocked. I mean, we're all very happy because it just puts us one step closer. That money will go to the city of Clearwater, who will then give it off to Clearwater Ferry to purchase two new ferries, which are larger and I think more sturdy. So we're going to have to figure out what that is, Jennifer. Um, but Jennifer is also working with um, Clearwater, and I know you've been gone, so we've got to probably jump on that pretty quickly. Um, we're trying to make sure that our, our um, agreement with Clearwater Ferry is it's a, more of a tri-party agreement, that our terms aren't any different than Clearwater's and that they serve us both as municipalities instead of each of us doing it separately and whoever gets the best deal. So Jennifer has been helping with that and I'm sure you'll reach out this week, but that's also good news about the ferry part of it. So, um, so we keep plugging away at this. Um, and I will say that the county attorney's office is continuing to look at bed tax money for tourist travel like this. Um, they say it's promising, but nobody's come out to say anything. But the fact that we do have this million dollar grant, I say we, it's really the city of Clearwater, but it's we because it's collective and it affects us all. Um, I think gives us a, even more um, it shows the county that we, we are all taking this very seriously. And if we can get a tri-party agreement, it shows the county that we're all working together, trying to row in one direction. So it's just all very, very slow. Um, but Jennifer's on it, so um, you, you all might have heard about Drew Street, been hearing in the news about Drew Street, that uh, Clearwater Council was very concerned given some of the feedback they were given. So I thought I'd just give you some background on that so you know the facts. Um, they did vote in favor of it three different times, by the way. But there are new people in their dais now. And um, the concern was, is that with the Coachman Park, park, park 
um, gives, whatever you call that, the, where they're going to have all the concerts. The yeah, wherever, whatever uh, they're calling the, I don't know what they're calling the Coachman Park Park now. I don't know what they're calling it. There's, a, there's going to be a name. Boardwalk and Imagine or something? I don't know. Is it the sound? I don't know. But I mean, it, it's, you know, you can have as many as 10,000 people there at any given time. And so they're very concerned about traffic, which of course, you know, I think this points out to all of us as we watch our partners kind of struggle through these things, that whenever we do build something that might draw attention or traffic, that we got to consider public transit and all of those things along with it at the same time we're considering doing it, that it's not just about building the building. Um, and, I, and I think because they've had such, such a leadership turnover there, which we totally feel for them, that some of that stuff maybe wasn't considered at the time they were making those decisions. Um, so, i.e. the park's gonna open up at the end of the month, and all of a sudden they're thinking about Drew Street going from two lanes in both directions to one lane in both directions. And they're in a panic. Um, so, they did talk about doing a test run with striping, but that was like five and a half million, $5.4 million that FDOT was not gonna cover. And of course they weren't gonna pay that because that's essentially the cost of the project itself. Um, so, <clears throat> FDOT, along with others, Forward Pinellas, they're doing new numbers on all the different streets surrounding it, just to double check. Um, I've asked and they promised me they're going to consider how much uh, going from an hour trolley service frequency to 30 minute service would assist, how much that frequency on the waterborne transportation ferry thing would assist um, because I, I mean, especially with what they're doing in downtown, our, the, the trolley goes right there. Now, does that help everything? No, but they can also look at South County coming north. You know, there's there's other services. I'm not talking about bus service per se, but I'm talking about you know those services that people really like to get on. Um, so they are going to look at that, and I'm hoping that that can start to give us a case to get 30 minute service? Because I think we all, need, I think we need it for our downtown, I think they need it for their concert venue. Um, and even if it's just on the weekends, I don't care, but it, it's necessary. So all of that's gonna be looked at. Forward Pinnell, or FDOT has confirmed that they, they will not lose the money for the project. It's going to remain and, and it is on schedule now that they've learned that that test isn't going to work. So it is on schedule, but these numbers might shift some of the design. But forward panel, I mean, uh, FDOT is still hanging on to the money. So it's moving forward. It's just been a little bit of a bumpy road, but maybe we get something out of it with anything they figure out with this 30 minute service. That's what i am got my fingers crossed. If we can get the, everybody to put more money together for that, get even another new service grant. I mean, there's just so much opportunity there. So that's uh, Forward Pinellas. Um, the Tourist Development Council, uh, which is the advisory board to visit St. Pete Clearwater. As you might have seen, Steve Haynes has resigned his position as the director. Brian Lowack is taking that on. If you don't know who Brian Lowack is, he was originally John Maroney's um, uh, aide and then he transitioned to being the county's legislative uh, agenda manager, liaison. I'm not, I don't remember his exact title, but uh, anything government affairs. Um, and then he was the interim uh, director of planning and community development because they were kind of in the middle of transitioning that position. And now he is the interim uh, CEO, director of Visit St. Pete Clearwater. So he is the jack of all trades. Um, I had a great meeting with him last Friday. Um, 
I didn't mince any words. <laughs> and of course, you know, talk to him a lot about uh, beach renourishment as well as tourist transportation and gave all my arguments. Um, as far as beach renourishment, there's a pot of money that goes towards beach renourishment and there are three county locations that aren't considered in that mix. One of which is Dunedin Causeway. One of which is Fred Howard and one of which is uh, Fort DeSoto. None of those are part of the beach renourishment program. And I'm, you know, I, there's a whole ton of money sitting there. Now there's a whole ton of money needed, but you know, you just look at the pictures of the causeway, it has, it has evaporated over the years. So um, I gave my fight to him on that one. Um, his mission is just to get the organization. It's missing a lot of positions just like we are, only they're, if they have five department heads or vice presidents is what they call them, they're not there. Those positions are not filled. It, it's shaky, so he's going to focus his efforts there. Um, we already talked about the History Museum and what they're working on, um, and Pride, same thing. We have the women's dinner on Wednesday. Hope everybody can make it at, at the Honu. Men yes, men can come too, but it's honoring, honoring women, I guess, um, which men should be doing as well. Um, always, right. Um, I'm sure those are the things I can tell you about, but I, I can't think of them all. Um, okay. Anything else for the good of the order? One quick question. Sure. Did, in fact, the golf course grant make it through the budget? Actually, when I saw the, 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 um, the ferry appropriation, I thought, I think it did. I yeah. think it did too. And okay, I, I did not events. see anything about the Eden Golf Course oh. on the veto list. I wasn't even thinking about it, to be honest. Maybe Jorge knows. Wait a minute. But there was nothing on that veto okay. list because I read all nine pages and then read the the narrative on the separate letter. Yeah, I'd have to go back and check, but I'm uh, almost certain last week that I saw um, an email that was forwarded by um, Harry Gross to Vince that said that it was approved. Think, and there, and how much was that for? Five hundred thousand. For the greens? Yes. For historic, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole process that has to be followed, you know, in mm -hmm. order to get the funding, but it was approved. It was not vetoed. Ha. That's great. That helps. So <laughs> you already know what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So that's where PSEA's electrification money went. Yeah. Went the golf course. Well, but in essence, if you think about it, we're going to get the benefit of two different things from the, you know, not being on that veto list. And I think that's, I mean, I wish. That wasn't complaining. No, just. I know. Um, I just wanted to say, just because the mayor thinks it doesn't make it so in your head. That stop it. <laughs> you have no idea what I'm talking oh, about. I have a strong suspicion. Oh, of no, you don't. <laughs> I'll nope. bet I do. Nope. I'll bet I do. Um, anyway, okay. Anything else? Yeah, just Mayor, just one question, just and this is for the public as well as me. Uh, how can you get tickets to that women's? Do you mean how we can do that? That luncheon tomorrow? It's a dinner. It's a dinner, a dinner. and you go, you get a ticket right there. At right home. there. Mm -hmm. So are they sold out? I, I haven't got mine. I just talked to her, so I think oh. I think I think we can get in. Okay. But we probably should go over there right as soon as this meeting is over. Right, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, nothing else? We will adjourn. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.